Hello brothers and sisters. I have another message for you today. After I woke up this morning, I went into prayer as I always do at the beginning of my day. And about midway through my prayer, I began to feel a heaviness of heart. I started to cry and I didn't understand why. I asked the Lord why I was feeling like this, and at first I thought the Holy Spirit was moving me to feel this spirit of anguish because we are about to leave and say goodbye to our loved ones. I didn't get a response from him right away, and I continued to pray. Then when I was done, I got this download of information in my spirit. Before I tell you what that was, I want to say that I had a dream this morning. The dream is a little stranger than I'm used to, and I wasn't sure if it was from the Lord. But then after I prayed and got the download of information in my spirit, it all connected for me. So in my dream, I saw the entertainers, Beyonce and Jay-Z. I have never dreamt about these two before, and that's why this was so strange to me. Those of you who have been watching my videos for a while know that I don't listen to secular music anymore. I don't watch television. I don't really engage in much entertainment at all anymore, except when I'm spending time with my husband. We watch old TV shows, and very occasionally, we might watch a movie. Okay, but I don't follow the entertainment world anymore. I don't listen to radio. I don't even know who's out there anymore. Like, I haven't read an entertainment magazine or watched the e-network in, I don't know, maybe like eight years or so. So I'm not up to date on current musical references at all. But in the stream, I saw Beyonce and Jay-Z walking through a church that I used to go to. They were heading out the doors. I guess church service was over and they were leaving but they were being pursued by someone who they felt was trying to hurt them. This person who was pursuing them killed Jay-Z, and Beyonce went into hiding. Then that was the end of the dream. I wasn't sure if it was from the Lord until I got that download of information from the Holy Spirit after I had prayed this morning. I heard, all that can be shaken will be shaken, and that which cannot be shaken will remain. Then I immediately understood that the great shaking, the separation, and the judgment has come upon the church. That which cannot be shaken will remain in the Lord. That which can be shaken will fall away. This is something the Holy Spirit told me back in July of 2013. I was told that persecution was going to come upon the church, and that those who were not firmly in the Lord would fall away, and those who were in the Lord would remain in Him. Then as I got up and I began to give my cats their lunch and their water, I got that Beyonce is the spirit of Jezebel and that Jay-Z is the spirit of Ahab. These spirits are in the churches bringing deception, and Father God is purging these spirits out. It was Father God in my dream who was pursuing Beyonce and Jay-Z, causing them to leave the church in fear for their lives. Right now, Father God is sifting and purging the church of all worldly things and spirits that do not belong. This purification started last year, but now the judgment has come for those who have not allowed themselves to be purged of the, of the carnalities of this world. I began to feel this in my spirit about a week ago when I realized that I had stopped hearing from the Lord for the last month. The Holy Spirit was letting me know that I had caused a separation between myself and the Lord, and this was going to cause his judgment to fall upon me. But just as Nineveh repented of their sins, and God turned from his anger and wrath, I also repented of causing this division between myself and the Lord, and I begged him to correct me and purify me from the spirit that had come upon me. If you listened to my last message, I told you that the Lord was calling me to come away from technology. It was my love of technology that caused the separation to take place. Being a little more revealing than I normally am, I'm going to tell you that he gave me a dream a few days ago, showing me that Android had become my God. I was mortified when I learned he felt this way. If we're not careful, we'll allow things in our life to consume us and cause us to neglect our relationship with the Lord. And before we ever realize it, we become separated from the Lord and are back in the world. Jesus, Yeshua, wants to be the only thing that consumes us, like an all-consuming fire. 
but many of us try to make him share the spotlight with something else in our lives. The Holy Spirit brought back to my remembrance a scripture. No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and mammon. That's Matthew 6.24 and Luke 16.13. None in the body of Christ think that we do this, but we do. Every one of us. The Lord wants to be our first priority, the one we give most of our time and attention to. He has given me another chance, thankfully, but only because he has seen my heart and knows that my heart belongs to him. I've come to him in sincerity, begging for forgiveness and help in being purified and holy. If you are not hearing from the Lord, you need to be asking yourself why. And if you don't know, you need to take that to the Lord in prayer and ask him to give you understanding as to why you aren't hearing from him. You should be hearing from the Lord daily. If you're not, it's because there's something that is keeping you from hearing him. I'm not passing judgment. I'm just passing on my experience and what the Holy Spirit is giving me. Let's talk about the spirits of Jezebel and Ahab in the church. Who was Jezebel? Jezebel was a manipulator, a worshiper of false gods, and a persecutor of Christians. She's also been associated with harlotry and seduction. From what we know about Beyonce, she is a worshiper of false gods. She dresses like a harlot, and she is a beautiful woman who can easily seduce anyone into following after her. A San Francisco church held the first ever Beyonce Mass back in April or May of last year, and 900 people showed up for it. Then Beyonce herself bought a church in New Orleans. I would say she definitely fits the bill as Jezebel. Ahab was a man who was dominated by his wife Jezebel, and she was the one really ruling behind closed doors. This reminds me of Adam and Eve. Adam was manipulated by Eve to eat that which the Lord said was forbidden. Eve was manipulated by the seducing spirit of Satan, who enticed Eve to eat the forbidden fruit. This was also true of Sarah and Abraham, and also Herod and Herodias. After Abraham was promised by God that he would have a son, Sarah did not believe she would be the one to give Abraham that son in her old age. So she told Abraham to take her maidservant and conceive a child with her. This was not God's plan. Sarah acted out of her flesh and did not have the faith to believe God would perform such a miracle as to open her womb and cause her to bear a child. She even went so far as to laugh at God when she heard him telling Abraham that he would have a child. And when Sarah told Abraham to take her maidservant and conceive a child with her, he did. Herod liked John the Baptist, but Herodias, who was Herod's sister-in-law, wanted John dead. So she told her daughter to ask for John's head on a platter, and when her daughter requested this, Herod complied. But what does this have to do with Jezebel and Ahab in the church? In today's world, there is a saying, If mama ain't happy, ain't nobody happy. This is a declaration that women are the rulers of the household. In the world, women manipulate and use seduction to get what they want. This is the Jezebel spirit. And as we saw with Eve, women are easily enticed by the devil, who uses women to get to their men. But this is not to say that men are not just as easily seduced by the temptations of evil. Obviously, every man has fallen into the traps of Satan, and most of those traps were laid by women. So what is God saying in all of this? Well, for one thing, the church has been consumed by entertainment, and that's why he used Beyonce and Jay-Z as the spirits of Jezebel and Ahab. Secondly, the church is becoming ruled by women who are bringing in witchcraft, the acceptance of other gods, the acceptance of homosexuality, and many other ungodly things. Jezebel was a worshiper of other gods, and many in the church are giving their time and attention to things that have become their gods. Jezebel was a persecutor of Christians. Many in the church and in the body of Christ are intolerant of one another 
and persecute one another on a daily basis with their words and treatment of one another. Jezebel was a seducer, or at least she has become associated with being a seducing spirit. There are many seducing spirits in the church. Jezebel caused Ahab to stop worshiping God, and instead he began to worship the gods that Jezebel was serving. Sadly, many in the church no longer worship the one true God, who is our Creator, our Father, the Alpha and the Omega. Many churches don't even preach Jesus Christ anymore because to many in the congregations, the name Jesus Christ is offensive. Now because of this, the Holy Spirit says, all that can be shaken will be shaken, and that which cannot be shaken will remain. As we are told in the Bible, the church will be judged first. We can even see that in Revelation chapters 1 through 3. The letters to the seven churches were not just for the churches back in John's time. Those letters are for all of the churches that have existed from the day of Pentecost until today. Everyone in the church has been evaluated and judged for their actions. Those who won't come away from their sin will be left behind when the rapture occurs. This is the shaking, the sifting, the separation of the wheat and the tares. This is the judgment before the rapture. If anyone should turn from their sin now, they may be found worthy by the Lord to be taken into his kingdom. If you disregard this message, and if you do nothing different with your life, you will be left behind, and you will see the horrors that are spoken about in the prophecies of the last days. Again, this is not my judgment. This is God's judgment. As the Holy Spirit said through me last night, it is time to gather closer to the Lord now as closely as possible. Allow all worldly things to fall away and cling to Jesus in our remaining moments. Nothing is worth missing the rapture and the Lord's salvation. Everything in this world is about to be destroyed, and all that you will have is great sorrow. Eternity in hell will be even worse than God's judgment. Whatever anyone goes through on this earth during the tribulation, will still be much more merciful than eternity in hell with the devil and his angels. I can't imagine eternity without Jesus. For me, that would be nothing but loneliness and heartbreak. I love the Lord very deeply, and I would never do anything intentionally to jeopardize what I have with him. So I'm calling the body of Christ once again to come away from all things that are not of God. Surrender yourself completely to him now. We do not have time to waste. I love you guys, and I'm praying for the body of Christ and the lukewarm believers every day. The Lord is very saddened that so many have been tempted into falling away from Him. He loves you, and He does not want to see you left behind and possibly dying in your sin. Those who have fallen away, He will welcome you back like the prodigal son if you repent and turn from your sin. Please hear this message. Please take this message to heart. Not everyone will make it in the rapture. The Lord will not find everyone worthy. You may believe in Jesus as Lord, but until you have fully surrendered to Him, you are not in His salvation. He desires a pure bride without spot or blemish. This means that you have to allow the Holy Spirit to remold you and transform you, giving you new life and making you born again. The word of the Lord says that you cannot pour old wine into new wineskins. This means that a person in the Lord's salvation cannot continue life in their old ways. The wine is the spirit. Old wine is the old worldly spirit, and new wine is the Holy Spirit of God. Just as you cannot pour old wine into a new wineskin, you cannot pour new wine into an old wineskin. A person who is born again must walk in a new spirit with a new mind and a new heart. Soon those who are born again will have a new body, one that will not die, one that will not be made of flesh. Our new bodies will be eternal. The Bible tells us that when the Lord comes, we shall see him as he is, and we shall be like him. For those who have been made pure and are ready for the Lord, this is an exciting time. We are about to leave this world and go into eternity where we will have a new home 
and a new life with a new mission. For those who are not ready for the Lord, I urge you to surrender your life to Jesus now. Accept Him as your Lord and Savior. Let go of the world and all of the things that are not of God, and let the Holy Spirit transform you. Walk with Jesus daily. Let Him teach you. Let Him change you. Come as you are right now, with a pure heart and in sincerity, and let Him free you from this world and the spirits of the adversary. Let Him break the chains off of you that are binding you to this world and to sin. I praise you, Lord Jesus. I praise you. And I believe that you are working in the hearts of many who are hearing this message. I believe your work will be done in them. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, I feel the Holy Spirit all over me right now. The Lord is coming. Be ready for him. God bless you, brothers and sisters. I love you. Shalom.